All right, DJ Santiago, the real estate jock here today with the man, the myth, the legend, Claude Diamond. Me? How are you, Claude? I'm wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, we're excited to have you on the show. Um, you know, you're, you're a guy that I came across, like I'm sure most of your clients find you, which is, you know, on the internet, you've, you've done a tremendous job of branding yourself. And Thank you. You have a ton of information out there about, about, uh, your training style and your sales style. So I wanted to have you on the show. Um, but the big thing I'd like to start off with for those people who may not know who you are is kind of what, you know, wh wh how did you end up at this particular place today? Uh, I know you've had a long journey within real estate. You've been in it for about 30 years. So if you could just kind of bring everybody who may not know you up to speed on how you got to this place uh, in real estate. Yeah. Um, thank you for, once again, for asking me. Um, I've been in real estate um, investing um, 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 for about 31 years now. Um, uh, uh, played by the rules, went to good schools, went to law school, had a corporate jobs. Never felt I was making the money I deserved. Didn't like working. I don't play nice with others, so I didn't like the corporate <laughs> mentality. Um, always wanted my own business. Um, I'm the, I had a big advantage in life. I'm the son of, of immigrants, and um, immigrants always work 10 times harder than everyone else, and so and they make their children do that also. Um, I love real estate. I, I had real estate fever at an early age. I bought every book, went to every seminar. Um, I did one really smart thing. I met a mentor uh, who was already a self-made millionaire and very successful utilizing options or at least purchasing, um, still my favorite strategy. But the biggest takeaway was to be in that environment of someone who was energetic, successful, uh, did business very straightforward, very honest, very New York style. Um, and he was a great, he was the greatest salesperson I ever met. And I was probably the worst salesperson you have ever met at that time in my life. Mm -hmm. um, and so working from home, um, uh, kind of keeping my business very small, very accountable, uh, I've built up a, a really lovely, um, uh, very successful uh, real estate and sales training business. Okay. Um, and I know that within your journey with, uh, of real estate, you tend to concentrate on creative real estate, right? I mean, yeah. That's, that's kind of your niche. That's how I got started. This, okay. So of all the different strategies out there, people who buy and hold, people who do commercial properties, uh, demos, et cetera, et cetera, why did you pick creative real estate um, as, as your journey? Oh, real easy. I didn't have any more money left. Okay. Creative real estate means to what it says creatively. Uh, can we use leverage? Can we use skill sets? Can we use really good powers of persuasion to convince people that there are different strategies when they can't sell a home conventionally? Creative real estate is all about um, turning, can I use bad language? Absolutely. It's about turning chicken shit into chicken salad all day long. Okay. And, and that's the beauty of using lease options, lease purchasing, renting to own, wholesale real estate. We're trying to control these huge entities, these uh, these great assets, and remarket them by renting them, leasing them with an option, selling the contracts, creating notes, and creating something for ourselves because we didn't have the money at the time. We ran out of it. You need, sure. a, lot, you need a lot of money to buy real estate. Did you know that, DJ? I do. I do. I do. Definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's how I got started. And um, and as I built up the business and I built up my cash flow and notes, then eventually I could be a more conventional, a more orthodox investor. I had the credit rating. I had the banks. The, I had the signature loans. I was able to do the 10, 20 percent bet down because when you really come down to it, people love cash and they want to do more conventional real estate eventually. Sure. It's much sure. easier when you when you have the money. And you have the bank; it's much easier to do this business. But, Absolutely, but you got to get started somewhere. And I know, um, in working with you and, and watching a lot of your stuff online, you talk about the million dollar skill. And obviously, you started off with limited resources, and now you're you feel like you're in a good position to do some things a little more conventionally. Yeah, you know, the See million this? dollar skill. What's that? See this? Though what I'm holding? Yes, sir. This is the gateway drug to the universe. It's called an iPhone. 
Mm -hmm. If you know if you know how to use the right words and master this device, which everybody has, mm -hmm. you you too can have a great real estate business. So how did you go from in your using your words, the world's worst salesperson, yeah, to somebody that's mentoring people all over the world, doing real estate deals all over the country, kind of calling your own shots, being a one man army? How how did you go through that journey? How would you, how would you say you, you landed uh, your million dollar skill and perfected it? You know, it goes back to my mentor. I was in that environment of success. If you want to be a millionaire, hang around with one. Hang around with one who's doing business honestly, um, successfully, financially, and is willing to be accountable to you. There's too many programs out there where people are just taking your money and giving you really overblown macro advice. Um, what I, what I, my mentor did with me, and I do exactly with my students, is this one-on-one -on -one accountability where they can call me, text me, email me, schedule with me, join me in a group call. It is about me teaching people all the dumb mistakes I made, and then also so they don't make them, they don't duplicate my failures, but also learn about the smart things that I learned about sales and persuasion and influence. The most important thing is to learn why some people are so successful. And I, I truly believe with my heart and soul that it's about communication. Awesome. Awesome. It's a powerful message. I mean, somebody selling their home, if it's a very emotional situation, especially if it's something that's got uh, some distress behind it, somebody's sick, somebody's looking for a way out. So um, how do you usually tend to navigate that? If you've got somebody on the other end of the line that um, – thinks they know more about real estate than you or thinks that they've got all the answers. Generally speaking, um, like I said before, it's kind of an emotional process. So how do you, how do you stay focused on trying to make them happy and get the, get the things done that you need to get down the call? Well, I'm a student. Uh, what I learned from Max was how to be confident, how to, um, he was a natural born salesperson. So it was kind of hard to him to explain scientifically what he was doing and how he was doing it. But I was able eventually to figure it out. I studied a lot of people like um, Dr. Byrne, um, uh, who wrote uh, Games People Play. He's the father of transactional analysis. I studied Robert Ch uh, Cialdini, a uh, little bit of Freud, and things like that in there. And wow. I basically, I wanted to know why people do the things they do. How do they feel? How do they think? How can we control the environment so that there's trust, there's likability, um, there's an authority figure, uh, a parent versus a child in every discussion. If someone comes to me like you just mentioned and says, Claude, I know it all. Go ahead. Let's do that role play. Okay. Um, hello. Yeah. Hi. How can I hello? help you? How can I help you, sir? This is Claude. I have no idea. You called me. Okay. Uh, you were going to do the I know it all, though, stuff. Oh, okay. Uh, like you mentioned earlier. All right, but if you call me or I'm calling no, you. It doesn't matter. We'll just go right in the discussion. <laughs> Mr. Santiago, you seem to be a very smart uh, uh, young man. Um, uh, why are we talking today? Why do you think you need me in this transaction? Um, Maybe you don't. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel pretty good about our price. I feel pretty good about our strategy. And Why don't you, you just know. sell it yourself? What's the issue well, you know, here? I'm, I'm, I'm considering that. I mean, it's just it's it's not moving. I think I think you know a lot oh, of people I think just don't you see should. the value. I think you should. You have my full endorsement, sir. I don't even know why we're talking today. How long have you had this on the market, this this house, sir? Well, it's been about ninety days. Ninety days, and it's a pretty. You're in Florida, right? That's correct. Florida is a pretty exciting market right now. Very low inventory, uh, historically low interest rates, uh, high demand because people like to retire to Florida or go there and be snowbirds and stuff. Why do you think? Why do you think you haven't had any offers in ninety days? I mean, a lot of people say that uh, my price is just a little bit above what they want to pay. And, you know, a lot of people are coming down here uh, from the north and don't really have the money to, to, to execute this deal. And Not sure if I understand, excuse. though. Oh, don't thousands, tens of thousands of homes, aren't they bought and sold in Florida every, every year, if not every month? Yeah, absolutely. Except, absolutely. Your, except yours. What do you think you're doing wrong? Well, Tell, I mean, give me some, I, I I, give me some idea. Maybe I can help you. Well, I mean, you know, I've, I've, I've watched YouTube. I've, I've worked with some of the top, some of my buddies are the top realtors in town. And they've, they've come over, they've looked at the house. They say that we've prepped it and uh, it looks great. I actually made some new additions. And, and, you so, st and, you, and with all that, you still haven't sold it. 
Yeah. Let me ask you something, because I'm very busy, sir, and I do help people solve their real estate problems. If I, if, um, if there was a way you and I could do business today, or I could help you solve your problem in the th next 30 days, we wouldn't want to continue this discussion and make a commitment today, would we? Uh, I'm, I'm intrigued. Which means? Which means I'm curious as to what you're going to propose that I haven't already tried. Okay, so if there was a solution that was practical that we could agree on today, you wouldn't be the person in authority to make that decision, would you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, oh, you would? Well, that's wonderful. Maybe we, Would you mind if I ask you a few questions? Maybe sure. I can Maybe I can get a better idea how to solve this problem. You ask me a few. And the only thing I ask in return is that if we can't come to a conclusion at the end of this conversation, you fire me. Would you do that for me? Sure. Thank you. That's guts. Gotcha. That's guts. Yeah, that's interest. That's an interesting technique. Um, it's very sure. direct. It's very. Uh, uh, it's very honest. It's transparent. Who is the authority figure? You were. You played it very good, by the way. Mm -hmm. You were. You were trying to. You know. I know everything. <laughs> and did I fall into your emotional trap? Your. Did you suck me into that vortex? No, no, not at all. You definitely kept uh, asking the questions and keeping me focused uh, and intrigued and, and interested. Did I go to a script? Did I use a script or go into a presentation at any point? No, I mean, I actually didn't even feel like, as if um, I was being sold anything. It was really just like you were somebody trying to see if we can do business. So. I was playing the doctor in the room or the parent role. Excuse me. Sure. Uh, the um, not so much the parent, but more like the adult role in this non-emotional, very direct, very intellectual. I was trying to make you emotional. We, you know, and, and what we and I set up what we call an agenda near the end there, where I have sure. permission to ask questions. Uh, I set out a roadmap, and then I actually got a commitment from you that you wouldn't do the "I'll think about it, I'll call you later." You would just fire me. Mm -hmm. I'm actually controlling the environment by the words I use. I'm trying to intrigue you, make you, you said the word curious, uh, and I, you said maybe intrigued, yeah, I'm intrigued or something like that, you said. Sure. Yeah. Okay, I'm in a position now that uh, you're my patient, I'm the doctor. If I can give you a solution to your property, I might be able to close you, which I do very often, by the way, like Max taught me. I close people in one phone call, wow. sometimes two. And sometimes I get to fire people. The whole point is, Guts is about not only learning the science of persuasion and influence, but also the art form, how to say the words, the tempo, um, and things like that. And also to feel so good about ourselves, because in my gut system, the salesperson comes first, not the prospect, Absolutely. which is very controversial if you want something controversial. Um, yeah. I believe that people who give good value, who are willing to sell products and services that resolve issues for people, I believe that if they do business honestly and they work hard at it, they deserve to be compensated. What do you think? No, I definitely agree with that. You know, there's a, the value of a good service, especially with something so uh, expensive as real estate can be. <laughs> make a huge difference in somebody's life. Sure. You're right. Absolutely. You're right. And we have to sound different from everyone else. 99% of the realtors, the investors that come from the gurus and the seminars, they all, they all are so boring and they all say the same words and the prospect knows exactly what they're doing and rejects them heavily. And when you get too much rejection, that's not motivating. I don't want to make phone calls when people are not nice to me or lying to me, manipulating me, or hanging up the phone. I can't do that. I'm sensitive. Right. right. <laughs> no, I, I agree with you. So what's a typical day in the life of uh, Claude Diamond? I'm sure. I know, I know you're an active runner. I know you, know you like to do all that type of stuff. So can you walk me through, hey, I'm up at a certain time, and, and you know, what your general day looks like? Sure. From start to finish. Well, I live in different places. I live in California, Colorado, Hawaii, and I spend a lot of time at my uh, my my wife's mom, a ninety years old, lives in Pinehurst, North Carolina. I don't believe in taking vacations. I believe in living where you want to live. Um, it's much better to live where everybody else takes a vacation. Uh, this morning, for instance, I got up at five fifteen uh, here in Colorado. Uh, read my New York Times, part of my Wall Street Journal. Listened to a little NPR. Worked with my weights, did my sit-ups, took a run as the sun's coming up, 
um, to um, the rec center, the health club. Uh, did some swim laps, took a steam. My wife picked me up. I changed clothes in the car, bad visual. Um, you know, uh, and we drove to, um, I'm on the board of directors of the Lions Club. It's a fundraiser, I believe. Um, it's a nonprofit organization that raises money for children who need eye surgery, glasses, awesome. people who need seeing eye dogs. Uh, went to that meeting. Meeting went a little long. So left the meeting very and went to my car. I had two scheduled appointments uh, right there. And boom, it's uh, um, uh, it's eight. It's only eight thirty in the morning. Okay, wow. I want to get. I want to enjoy every moment of this this special thing we call life on Earth. I want to be healthy. I want to have fun. Um, I I like running my own business. My average day is speaking somewhere between, on the low side, easy going day, eight to ten appointments or people. On a high day, maybe 25, which is exhausting. Um, part of my success culture that I teach my students is that you got to speak to five new prospects a day. Mm -hmm. you got to make offers every day. you got to do social media marketing every day, videos, Facebook uh, postings, things like that. These are the things I do every day. I spend at least an hour a day on marketing. I spend at least... Um, four or five hours of training sessions because I have students all over the world in 18 different countries, not just oh, wow. the United States. Um, we usually do 15 to 30 minute sessions. Uh, then I do my own phone calls. I'm an active investor. I'm also a, a gut sales trainer. I love doing one-on-one -on, -one on Skype with my students. Um, occasionally, truth be told, do I have to tell the truth? Um, sure. Okay. Um, I take a, I'll take a little... 30, 60 minute power nap on the yeah. foot on the futon. This is my office, but there's another there office go. next to it. Um, then I'll go back to work until dinner time. Um, I'll take another run, maybe in the afternoon, if the weather's nice. I love running in the fall when the leaves are coming down. It's a busy man. When I get the pillow, I'm out. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> Was that more than you wanted, by the way? <laughs> no, that's, that's, you know, I think I think a lot of people want to emulate people who are successful. So I think you know, we bust ways. our ass. We work yeah. hard, but we're doing something out of passion, something we love. I love I, having my own business. I love the freedom, financial freedom, lifestyle freedom that this biz, wonderful real estate business uh, gives me. Sure. So that dovetails into my last question. You know, I, I've looked at a lot of different quote unquote gurus out there in the real estate place, uh, in the real estate marketplace who are teaching real estate. Um, and you were the only guy I came across that talked about hard work, talk about the long hours, talked about making the phone calls, doing all the stuff that most people, if not anybody else, was talking about. Everybody else I came across was talking about, you know, knowing your KPIs, your key performance indicators, <laughs> you know, putting together acquisition people. Man, and, my acquisition uh, manager, I love that. Yeah, yeah. all that stuff. My virtual kind of assistants. Yeah, and, and, and you know, they, they show the picture of them uh, on the beach or whatever. I'm running my multi-million dollar business from the, my laptop on a beach and blah, 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 blah. And I've got so much freedom and I can't be in the business. I got to be on the business. So you were the first guy that I kind of came across that was really talking about uh, running something, being in the midst of your business on the front lines. And so why did you take or why do you believe in your philosophy versus, you know, the, the other philosophies that are out there that kind of talk about putting together a team, manage that team versus, you know, you doing things on your own terms and doing it yourself? How, how does that how did you come up with that, and, and why are you the only guy talking about that? Like, why are you the only guy that? It's a great. Believes? It's a great question. I'm probably going to get in trouble with my answer, but it's okay. Um, I, I did the other stuff, um, uh, books, seminars, um, um, all that stuff. I did it, um, and the it it didn't work for me. Uh, there was too many gaps. Too many things were missing. I froze on the phone. I felt like my pants fell around my ankles in the shopping mall in front of Santa Claus at Christmas time. Most of I was embarrassed most of the time. I didn't have a, what I needed. Um, I saw, and I worked as hard as anybody could possibly work <coughs> with doing it the conventional way. I've spoke to a lot of people. I'm of the I'm of the opinion 
that most people who want to get into real estate are decent, hardworking people who have made a phen phenomenal financial investment, but they have not gotten the real world experience. They are not getting the accountability, the hand holding, and the failure rate, in my estimate, is in the high 90s. Failure rate in the high 90s. I, that, on principle alone, I find that disgusting. Mm -hmm. um, I decided what worked for me was having a mentor, a one-on-one -on -one relationship. That was the only way I was going to teach people because if they were, because at least they would have accountability and they would have someone through the process. And I see the success of my students. I get the biggest thrill in the world when a student calls, calls me back and says, Claude, I just did my first deal. Uh, I made some money. Uh, I feel great about myself. I'm two feet above the ground. I live for that moment. And I know that maybe this is not as money generating as some of these high scalable type programs. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, uh, I just believe that if you're going to start a business, you, you can't just hire a bunch of other people and keep spending money. You have to learn how to do it yourself. Duh. You better learn how to find the deals, negotiate the deals. You better know the strategies. You better have a decent marketing, contemporary, modern marketing plan. I don't know if you want to, if we have time to touch on that. And you better learn how to give good phone and because that's the million dollar skill. And nobody is teaching and all the guru programs, by the way, never focus on sales. What words mm -hmm. to use? How do you convince? How do you persuade somebody to give you their home or to give you money or sign a contract? or to trust you out of nowhere, you're a total stranger. That takes skills that you better have somebody who understands the psychology of persuasion and how, and you better practice it with them. And I wanna see people succeed. I, I can't, I, I don't wanna take a dime from somebody who I don't feel that I'm not giving that kind of one-on-one -on -one accountability. And, I'm, and um, my competition just doesn't wanna use that business model. It's probably not as financially feasible for them. Gotcha. Yeah, Whoa, I mean, is that a other... boy? Am I boy? Am I in trouble now with my competition? Oh yeah, oh yeah. But um, I didn't mention any names. I just no. said the failure rate is high nineties. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's a unique strategy uh, that you talk about because you know everything else that's either free online or that they want to charge you for in regards to enrolling in academies uh, or, or you know working with them as mentors really ends up being about yellow letters, you know, postcards, um, yeah. you know, calling people with a script. Um, scripts and, and don't work. Groups. Scripts yeah. don't work. They just put them in the shredder. They're boring. They're redundant. Presentations are boring because you don't know how to present to somebody until you've qualified them. And that's the biggest problem. And how do you learn success? from somebody who's working for a guru for $5 a day in a third world country who speaks broken English. How do you find success for somebody who works for Mr. or Mrs. Guru? And why, because listen, if, you're, if you know how to do your own deals, you're not gonna work for anybody, you're unemployable. Right. So why would I wanna listen to somebody, why do I wanna learn how to work for somebody at minimum wage when I, I want to learn from somebody who's doing it and is, and is making the money that I want to make. It, it's just common sense to me. Now, I know that you have a, an assistant that you work with now. I'm sure that took some time to get there. Do you ever, okay. feel, like it's a, do you ever feel like there's an appropriate time to, to add some labor to your workforce? Absolutely. I, I, absolutely. But have quality labor. Have, have labor that is saving you time. Because as you become successful and your time becomes more valuable, you want, you want somebody who can streamline it for you, who can help organize, who can do the things that they're better at. I don't do my own accounting. I hire a man who's a genius, who, makes, who saves me a fortune. I don't do um, a lot of conventional investing in stocks and bonds and things. I hire somebody who knows a lot, who does that 24-7. Uh, I, I can't return all the phone calls that I want to make today. I get too many through my social media marketing. I have a wonderful fellow named Jim who's been with me for 14 years who sets up appointments for me every day so that I reach my goal of five new people a day. Yes, you do bring in people, but you can't bring in people until you're making money. Too many people are delegating all this stuff to, when they haven't done it themselves yet. Interesting. And oh, that's that the problem. Sense. 
Yeah, definitely makes sense. You got to learn it yourself before you hire other people to get them to do what you want. You got to learn your business from the ground up. You can't start up here. You start here and you make your own phone calls, you negotiate your own deals, you do your own contracts, you set up your own marketing plan. You learn this business from the ground up. Like any the traditional stock uh, guy who became the head of a corporate, Steve Jobs started in a garage with his friend Steve Wozniak, their father's oh. garage. So you study very successful people. They usually didn't start up here. They started down here. Right. Right. No, sorry, makes, I'm sure it's complete sense. Sorry, I'm shy and reluctant today. No, not at all. I mean, this is good. This is great stuff. And it's very unconventional, which is I know your style with the gut sales method. Everything right. you do is definitely unconventional. So if anybody's looking to reach out to you, work with you, throw you some deals, how can they get a hold Google of you? your audience is so intelligent. I don't have to give them a bunch of stuff. All they got to do is Google Claude Diamond or go to ClaudeDiamond.com. My phone number is there. I'll give it anyway, 970-281-5151. I am so easy to find. I have over 600 videos on YouTube. I'm on Facebook. I do regular broadcasts on Facebook Live and on Periscope and, and YouTube Live. Just type in Claude Diamond with an E at the end of Claude and you'll find me. Awesome, awesome. Well, we love having you on the show today. Thank you for inviting uh, me. Yeah, absolutely. Let's do this again, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, man. I, I enjoyed I enjoyed the, uh, the humor and the unconventional methods that you're using. I think it's it's definitely unique and uh, seems to be a little bit more authentic than what's what's surfing the web out there. So uh, that, that's and you know we try to use we try to make things we we you know my my hero of my parting words. My, my hero in life, other than my mentor, Max, um, is my good friend, Popeye, who said, I am what I am. That's all what I am. Just be yourself. Do business honestly. Give people unbelievable value. Utilize, uh, utilize social media marketing and study the psychology, the art and science of persuasion. And you can't help but find the magic in, in this wonderful business. Awesome, Claude. Thanks for being on the show. This is a wrap for DJ Santiago, a.k.a. The Real Estate Jock. We love having you on today and look forward to having you back on at some point in your future. Thank you.